We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Catherine, that's Emily, and we are finally headed to Spain for the Formula One Spanish Grand Prix, but more importantly, um, Emily is in a different location and the campers have arrived. There is a camp happening outside my window. It's been a big week for us, Catherine. We've we've made some really? moves. You have more, you know, alive beings that you're responsible for, and I am in another mm-hmm. country. Yes, you are. What country are you in, Emily? So I'm currently sitting in Santiago, Chile. So I got here this morning and I'm here until Monday. And this is my last solo trip of my Ooh. time in South America. So, you know, just going to the mall, eating dinner at Chili's. Super yes. excited about that. Um, and tomorrow I'm actually going wine tasting, which I'm really excited about. I was nice. going to go on Saturday because they said that the Saturday wineries are better. And I was like, great. And then I was like, wait. I'll miss Quali. I can't go on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> so I called them and I'm like, um, yes, hello. I need to change my reservation. I was like, there's been an emergency and I have to taste wine tomorrow and not Saturday. <laughs> and they're like, um, is everything okay? I'm like, everything's perfect. I just can't go Saturday. So, yes. Yeah, the, the tail end of qualifying will be in the middle of our breakfast period and it will probably so the the way breakfast works at camp this summer is is it's cafeteria style and there are two lines and we have a lot of little kids so like the oldest campers and the the adulty adults have to like we wait to go last because we want the kids to eat and have time and not feel rushed um and um that means that you know, our breakfast period starts at 7.45. I'm probably not getting my food until after eight. So hopefully if timing works well, I won't have to worry. Like I'll, quality will be over by the time I'm actually going in for breakfast. So I'm not sitting in the middle of the dining hall on my iPad. Yeah. You know, so being in Chile, I'm in a different time zone now, and which just like yes. throws me off and us off a hundred percent. Um, but I was like, okay, is this a, is this a real time or is this like my, my new time now that I'm in a new location and sometimes my VPN picks up. So it like thinks I'm not in where I am. It's so hard and I'm so excited to be back in three weeks. Holy hell, Catherine. Um, yeah. yeah so, cause wine tasting starts at eight and Quali's at 10 mm. to preface. They pick you up at eight because it's an hour and a half, two hour drive. I'm not starting drinking at eight just to put that out there but anyways so yeah I had them change it because I was like there's no way I can make this so now I'll be watching it from the comfort of my hotel bed that's totally fair I I will be watching the race from the comfort of this weird bunk bed that I've been sleeping on the last two and a half weeks and that I will be sleeping on for the next six weeks um Uh, and also as a warning for the background of uh, my side of the pod, um, we still have the bagpipers here. Um, they haven't been piping for a little while, um, but they are knee deep in rehearsals for their final performance, which is tonight. Um, so if they get back to it between now and the end of the episode, I'm going to try to minimize it as much as possible. And also, you know, screaming happy children, et cetera, outside my door and a bunch of, you know, the counselors in training live like right downstairs. Um, and, you know, they, they like to blast their music. I wonder if the bagpipers take requests. Well, I know they said they did happy birthday for somebody, but you'd just be like, hey, we play want three birds. <laughs> um, <laughs> free bird. So one of my friends here is a music. <laughs> so one of my friends here is a musician, and he says that the bagpipes can only play in the key of B flat, which limits you greatly on mm. you know different songs that you can actually conceivably play on the bagpipe. So yes. the answer is they probably don't. I mean, they've only been practicing like the same three songs for the last week, and we are all respectful of their existence and appreciative, but very, very tired of hearing it. I don't blame you. Well, I yeah. think we've gotten off track with our um our weeks personally a little bit. So let's put us back on track and talk about my yes. favorite thing. Contracts. And mine. Yes. Well, yes and no. There is contracts, but there's not. Senior Carlos Sainz has come out and said he's making his decision soon. 
and every team that has not secured both drivers has offered him a contract. Which that's oh a lot God. of dri- that's a lot of teams. And yes. I love this. And we know that everyone has it on their mind that Carlos Sainz is the first domino. Well, that's not fair to say because Lewis was the first domino, but Carlos really is the true domino that will, you know, kind of set the course for everybody else. Right. Um, which immediately had me thinking like everyone wants Carlos. <laughs> He's the diamond of the season. I've been watching Bridgerton because the second part of the next last season came out and it just like a hundred percent, I drew, I drew parallels to that. Everyone is trying to, you know, have him on their dance card and take his take a seat with them. So I really hope he comes out soon with where he's going. Because honestly, just as a Carlos fan, it's giving me extreme anxiety about it. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's, it's just, it, there's so much waiting and it's so much of like, it's coming soon. I'll make my choice soon. And there's no better weekend to make the announcement than your home race weekend. So Spain, we are recording this. On Thursday, obviously, as you all know, if you listen to us regularly, we release our episodes on Thursday, but I was a little busy yesterday opening a camp. It's, there's every possibility that I will wake up tomorrow morning um, for the first qualifying session and see news that he's made his announcement. And, you know, Emily's already posted it on the Going Off Track Instagram because I'll be sleeping and Emily's three hours ahead of me right now. Um, but yeah, I just, I want to know because I want to know, and I'm just very impatient about this. And because Lewis made his decision in February, now we just have grounds to be impatient with everyone else. Yeah, well, I think it's, I think it's not necessarily with Carlos, but I'm, I'm really, you know, buying into this whole early silly season thing. And I'm anxious to know, because I know I want to know where Carlos is going, but it's also going to set the grid so quickly and we'll have our grid oh, yeah. for 2025 really really fast because as soon as Carlos makes his decision that takes up one seat and then everybody else knows that Carlos isn't available so then they can start like locking out in all their other drivers so he really is the most important domino to fall I think Mm -hmm. and then we'll have the rest of our our grid set for next year so that's why I'm anxious and excited yes to see Carlos but also to see where everyone else everyone goes, else. who's without a seat, yeah, and who's joining the grid next year. Because we're definitely going to have rookies next season. We didn't this season. We had the same grid, but we're definitely right. going to have rookies next season. Yeah, and I mean, we could have up to three rookies with, you know, Ollie Behrman, who's probably going to go to Haas, Kimi Antonelli, who's probably going to go to Mercedes. And we'll talk a little bit more about Kimi in a in the News of the Week portion. Um, I your, your face, if you're not watching us on YouTube, Emily kind of made a face when I said Antonelli's name, which I kind of also agree with, but we'll get to that. Um, and also, Jack Dewan is one of the options for Alpine. Um, so there are a lot of... You know, there's there's a big chance for a lot of upheaval that we won't know about. And, you know, Kevin Magnuson said, you know, everyone is waiting for Carlos to make his choice. Yeah, it's an extreme game of musical chairs and Facts. Carlos, is pl- Carlos is playing the music. <laughs> um, Yeah, I mean, well, t- speaking of Jack, like, I don't think it's a, oh, he might be joining. Now that Ocon's, like, definitely not coming back to Alpine because they've mutually decided to part ways. Mm-hmm. Mutually, um, allegedly, um, I think that Jack's like a shoe in for that seat because I don't know who else Alpine would would take. I mean, there's a, there's a question of like Joe Guan Yu maybe or even Botas, but I just I don't know if I don't know if Joe or Botas wants the mess that Alpine's in right now, and we'll talk about that also in our news of the week section. Um, so I I feel like Jack makes sense going yeah. to Alpine. I mean, Joe's come out and it's been reported that he brings about $35 million with him for right. like sponsorship money, which is a really big deal for the mid tier, lower tier teams. And he's also said like, you know, I'd be happy staying with Sauber. I could see myself at Alpine. Um, I think he would honestly just take any seat available to him because he just wants to stay on the grid because he's really border- bordering you know, not returning to the grid. I think his $35 million, you know, sponsorship money is a really good ace in the hole for him, but I don't think it's going to solve all the issues of trying to get to the track. 
Right. Like I sent you an article that allegedly said that Haas turned it down in favor of potentially right. an Ali Behrman Esteban Ocon lineup. Haas, you know, has its, its other issues. You, you said to me like, Haas doesn't know what they want, which is all, all <laughs> probably true. But I, I just, I worry and people have, you know, reportedly people have said that like the biggest concern for Zhou Guan Yu is that you know, nobody has seen him perform because he hasn't been in a good performing car his entire F1 career. And, and you know, all the money in the world for a younger driver can't really make up for that. No, and it's, and it's hard. It's like what we've seen with Yuki, right? Yuki's never had an amazing car, but he's been able to outdrive the car. So people give him respect and they're like, Yuki should stay on the grid and he's doing well. Okay. And same with Alex Albon, like he, you know, took the seat at Williams, but he outdrove the car and was doing really, really well. He did extend at Williams, which is great for him to stay on track. But when you're in some of those lower tiered team cars where the the car just isn't performing and it's not a good car, it's really hard to show and prove your worth. Exactly. So that that's that continues to be my big concern with Joe Guan Yu. Though maybe if Carlos turns down the Williams offer and goes to Sauber, maybe that opens something up for Joe, which I think some people have already predicted um, Joe going to Williams. I believe that's something that we talked about in the Chinese Grand Prix. I think Probably. it was so. Okay, just to touch on Williams for a hot sec before we move on to our news of the week. Um I was like all coming to terms with Carlos going to Williams and I was like, you know what? It's going to be fine. Things are going to be great. Alvon showed that he could outdrive the car. Maybe Carlos can too. They're really going to rebuild. JV knows what he's doing. Right. We're, we're turning the team around. You know, they're finally putting places and people together, building a really good team. And then he comes out and it's like, I've gotten offers from everywhere. And I'm like, damn it, Carlos, I was just coming to terms with you going to Williams and trying to figure all this all out. And now I have to like reconfigure the Tetris of the F1 grid in my mind. And it's just, it's driving me insane, but he'll find a seat. It's not like he's not yeah. going to be without a seat. So he'll figure it out. But the, the moral of the story is that for the sake of the fans, he needs to hurry up because we're going crazy here. Oh, I can't wait for the the musical chairs episode of Drive to Survive next season. It's going to be great. Oh my God, it's going to be great. I know. Well, with that, yeah. let's jump into our news of the week. Let's start with some some fun fluff before we move into some, you know, more serious Not things. So but fun. yeah. Um. So hopefully, you all know. If you don't, well, I don't know what rock you're living under. But um, the Olympics are this summer, and they are in Paris, France, which is super exciting. Um, I'm personally very, very excited. I know Catherine is also excited. We love to talk gymnastics in our DMs yep. as well. So super excited for that. But Something fun and F1 related, Charles Leclerc was one of the Monaco torchbearers. So there were six um, torchbearers when it went through and he was one of them, which is really exciting. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I thought that was really cool. Yeah, it was him. It was Pr um, Prince Albert of Monaco, who is obviously now iconic in the F1 world for his reaction what a to <laughs> Charles' is winning and the podium. Princess Charlene, who is iconic, um, and a few more um, Monegasque athletes. Um, and I just I just thought it was really cool. Lewis Hamilton got to do it um, for the London Olympics. Um, so it's, yep. it's really cool to see because, like, you know, I know that uh, you and I both know that you know, Formula One drivers, you know, motorsport drivers, they're athletes, but they're not like, it's not something that you really feel synonymous with Olympics because obviously the Olympic sports are, there's there's no car racing in, in Olympic sports. So right. I do think I've heard, you know, flashes of that being talked about, you know, over the years, but it's kind of just something that like, it's not really congruous. Um, so it's really cool to see, you know, Charles get that recognition and, you know, the bringing a little bit of that Olympic tie um, to the um, the sport and of course the fact that you know France and Paris is you know so close to Monaco that you know it, it makes sense yeah well it's cool that it's like they go through Monaco because for those of you again who don't know about Olympic torches and flames like I do I don't know what it's like officially called but I call myself an Olympic file or whatever I love the Olympics I love watching everything I've been to the world headquarters of the Olympics in Lausanne Ooh. Uh, Switzerland I got to see every single torch that they've had in the modern day Olympics which was really really cool you got to hold and touch one and stand on the podium I digress that's cool but the flame and the torch starts and it takes about a year to go all the way around the globe and then come back so because the Olympics are coming up it's getting closer and closer to France so. 
Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really, really cool. I, I love it. Also really cool things that are going to be happening in the summer of next year, because what is this podcast if we're not talking about 2025 and beyond? <laughs> um, we finally have a release date for the Brad Pitt F1 movie. Finally. Finally. I honestly yeah. thought that this was a lost cause. I'm not going to lie. I mean, this is one of Apple TV's most expensive movies that they've they're, that they've ever produced. So it's like, it better um, be, you know, it, it better be a thing that it, it exists. Um, but it will be coming out internationally June 25th, 2025. And it will be um, landing in North America on June 27th, 2025. So I know for me, if I'm working at camp next summer, that that is a day that I will be taking off so I can go see that movie. Yeah, I'm very excited. I hope they do it justice. I hope it's good. I hope it's not cheesy. Yeah. Knowing that F1 is, like, semi-involved because they're letting them film on race weekends and some of the drivers are in it. We all saw the picture of, like, Carlos walking with Brad Pitt last, from last season. Um, yeah. I feel like... And Lewis is producing it, it. Right. And Lewis is producing it, which, not gonna lie, that actually gives me a lot of comfort because I know how good for the sport he is. Right. Um So, yeah, I'm very excited to see it. Yeah, and I, I, I think I joke- to see it. I'm, I'm also we are impatient. No, I I think I also joked to you, or maybe I thought it. I I've been thinking texts and not sending them like all week long. <laughs> that maybe by the time they get the the movie gets released and we know where Carlos is driving in 2025, and they'll just Photoshop him out of the Ferrari race suit and into whatever team's race suit he's wearing next season. <laughs> no, that was that was when we were DMing about it. Okay, I, I, did, was, I like, did. What are they going to do about Carlos because he's in a Ferrari race suit? And you're like, oh, they'll just digitally alter it. It'll be fine. I mean, honestly, though, I think it would take away a little bit of something from the movie if they don't do something about, you know, what he what he's wearing in, in the just team kit. The scene, the re- they'll I mean, refilm I'll, it. Probably, I'll, also probably that because it's just like, especially because it was such big news that Carlos lost his Ferrari seat. Like, I think it w- they would need to like either retouch it or reshoot it or just scrap the scene altogether because, you know, Carlos will not be at Ferrari by the time the movie premieres, in yeah. my opinion. I've been doing a lot of video editing editing and like video <laughs> stuff um, for, for camp the last couple of days. So, like, this is where my brain goes now. It works. Yeah. Well, speaking of possibly making changes um alpine is considering leaving renault or dropping renault i should say as their engine supplier for 2026 which honestly i support i don't know why they've kept renault everyone else dropped renault um i mean because they are renault well i know they're renault but still i just like it if you paid attention last season, Alpine kind of made a bid to get more power units available to them than everybody else because of the, I don't want to say quality, but there was a, a, the power in the power unit was less than everybody, than all the other constructors of engines. Right. And so they they proposed that, well, because we're only at this level, we should get more power units because then it, we're, it's about equal. So just with that being said by them and like admitting that themselves, I don't know why you would stay with a less than engine supplier. Yeah. I mean, you know, it was very high profile, high, you know, high profile enough to get it into drive to survive of Red Bull leaving Renault and like the drama between, you know, Christian and Cyril and all of that. Um, but just, it, I feel like it's, it's a smart move for Alpine, but considering all of the news that's been coming out of their camp lately or around their camp about like, is Alpine for sale or not? And blah, blah, blah. And the insistence from inside that they're not like now Alpine's looking to ditch their, you know, engine supplier. That is, you know, their, their home group. Like it, it's not a good look. Okay. Okay. Flip side of the coin there, or is it, they're really digging in and they want to, progress and they want to get better and they want to invest so they're moving to a you know more optimal supplier that totally fair totally fair and they do have some options um christian horner has already kind of come out and said you know 
we're, we're already supplying, you know, Red Bull and our sister team V carb. We're not really interested in, you know, trying to stretch ourselves to supplying another team. Um, but Mercedes will have a supply deal open, um, in 26 when, which is when Renault is considering making the move because Aston Martin is moving to Honda. So they will no longer be a Mercedes customer team. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I think that logically makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the, the smart performance and business move but we'll see who knows yeah exactly it's it, it's it'll be really interesting to see um they reportedly um team principal bruno Fairman has you know opened like actually opened talks with rival manufacturers um we don't really know that could be like hey what do you think of this or like actually starting nego negotiations we don't know um but it could be really interesting to see you know alpine reno that his that team all that history and then reno just you know will be a, an existing engine supplier in 26 with no teams to supply yeah unless you know andretti comes along but that's a whole other story and we don't have time to get into that too <laughs> Again, it wouldn't be this podcast if we're not talking multiple seasons in the future. <laughs> Correct. For the current season. <laughs> but something that did come across the, or come up for this season, um, the FIA has ditched the Max for staff and super license rule. Um, obviously, we all know this is for Kimi Antonelli, but for those of you who don't know, the Max for staff and super license rule was that like you couldn't get your super license until you turned 18 um max and have a valid had, road license right and have a valid road license thank you for that caveat max verstappen infamously i guess um made them create that rule but now they're repealing it so you no longer need to have those requirements well, well, i want to push back a little bit they're not repealing yes, it I. they're basically adding a caveat saying okay, that's this is the rule say, thank you yeah, th this is the rule, but if we get pestered enough by a team principal who really wants an under 18 in the car, we might give in if they are, you know, good enough and cute enough and likable enough and capable enough. I don't know. It's it's really, you know, Toto Wolf badgered the FIA into doing this, in my personal opinion. Um, and it's it's just, you know, it, what it's it's not a bad thing because I don't think it's necessary you know like I don't think under 18 phenoms are bad for the sport um I just you know they do have to be careful and make sure that this is an under 18 phenom who is actually really good and my concern here is Kimi Antonelli has not necessarily been performing well in these opening weeks of Formula 2 um he's right. not the, he's not one of the front runners right now in the standings he you know he's been better this last couple of races but not he he hasn't been, you know, standing out to, to the point where I would be as comfortable as, you know, the Mercedes camp is in implying that he's their choice for 2025. Yeah. See, I get that. But F2 is so different than F1. Also that. Yes. And like, I, I'm glad to see this change so that we can see him in a young driver's, you know, FP1 session. Um, and see what he can actually do in an F1 car. I don't know if he'll actually get one this year. I mean, it's assumed that he will. I'm sure he will. But until he's in that car. Because, um, again, like, Ollie Behrman isn't, like, blowing everyone's socks off in F2. But he placed, you Correct. know, what, P7 um, when he took over for Carlos. So I think there's a lot of movement there. But I, okay, so I know that you and... I'm just going to keep talking on my tangent, but because I'm very against Timmy coming to the grid. I know that Agreed. you- Agreed. Yeah. But I don't think Mercedes will pick him up. It's just, it's too established of a team and Toto, like, is just Toto. There's no other explanation needed. He's always used Williams as the feeder team. Like, I don't see how you put him in a car with George- also, because can you imagine that dynamic? Like, George, we made you go to Williams for years and suffer, and now you're finally coming to Mercedes, and we're just going to pick Kimmy up. Like, George, that team dynamic, one, is going to fall apart. But I just right. don't think that's in the team's nature to pick up an 18-year-old and, you know, give him the straight right, which is which is right. It's really interesting to me that, you know, what from what we know of recent Mercedes history, which obviously they've had Lewis for a hundred years, um, you know, Valtteri came to them with a lot of experience and George is George. Um, but then you have, you know, 
all of a sudden they're they're scrapping everything they've done, you know, basically since they returned to Formula One after the Braun um, era, and they, you know, they're they're bringing on a, a fresh new rookie. Um, and I, you know, the, I think that the news of like them adding a caveat to the super license rule was really funny because all of a sudden it's like, you know, we, we'll see in Antonelli as soon as Monza, and then all of a sudden we'll see Antonelli as soon as Spain, and I'm like, Spain is in four days. Calm down. Um, but the other important part of this tweak in the rules is this is not to oust Logan Sargent for the second half of the season, in my opinion. Right. Um, this is to get Antonelli in the car um, for free practice sessions prior to his birthday, which is August 25th of this year. Um, so until... so. Right now, he's probably on the books for free practice sessions um, later in the season, like most teams do their rookie sessions. Obviously, when you have a rookie who is, you know, predicted to be on the grid the following year, they want to get a lot more experience as early as possible. So that that is why Mercedes made this push to get him in before his 18th birthday. But it's just it's such huge news because it's Antonelli. He's the second coming of Michael Schumacher in a Mercedes car and or as an Italian or whatever you want to say it. But I still I agree with you. I don't think this is the right call. That said, I do think that this is the call ultimately that Mercedes will make. And I don't think it's the right choice. No, I, I'm holding out and I trust Toto to make a different decision. But I don't know. Like, if he if he's there, he's there. And it's like, well, you know, you're stuck with him for a year or whatever. But I just, I understand the change in the rule. I think it's maybe something that Toto pitched to them of like, hey, what if we're in this situation? Like, just consider the the change. But like you said, a lot of the uh, young driver free practice sessions happen in the later half of the season. And, you know... July, August ish is the summer break. And I don't see him doing a session before the summer break. So like, what's the point of this? If it was only for Kimmy, you know what I mean? Right. Right. Which is that, that doesn't make sense. Cause you know, I don't really know the ages of the other, um, you know, F2 phenoms. And you said that F2 is a completely different beast from F1. And we've already discussed that, um, at this point, F2 might not actually be doing enough to develop, you know, drivers to go into Formula One. Um, but I I really just, you know, if if it's not to get Antonelli in by at least Monza to get him in his, in his home race, his home country, I don't know why we went, went through this entire exercise. And, you know, obviously it's like, why are we making such a big deal of, out of something that isn't even on the books? Well, that or that it could just be them like making updates and changes, but I don't know why they would do it mid-season if it wasn't for something like that. Right. Exactly. Watch. Like, this... like Antonelli doesn't do any free practice free practice sessions this year, like at all. And it's like everyone's been talking about all of this for absolutely no reason. Yeah, it's like whatever Absolutely happened to Frederick me. Vesti, who is also a Mercedes Junior driver, um, who's also you know a pre- you know he I think he won Formula or he he was like the top something in in F two last year like he was really good and like you know he was like all anyone talked about until Antonelli moved up to to F two and it's like oh Antonelli is the second coming, um, which is you know not to say that like Antonelli is not a good driver he 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 has torn it up in basically every Junior Motorsport series he has been in so he's a very good driver he's very promising he will have a great career in formula one i just think it's too soon yeah no i completely agree completely agree all right well we're in spain yes oh i'm so excited i love this race it's such a classic race i don't want it to go away i know everyone's talking about like madrid madrid over or yeah i know whatever but i love barcelona super exciting um, which means we're in Barcelona, which means that we also have F1 Academy coming back. <laughs> yep. I'm so excited. So it ha- we haven't had a race since Miami, which has been a yep. while. Um, but before we get to F1, speaking on all that young driver stuff, we will have Ollie Behrman driving for K, K- Mags in FP1. So he's getting another rookie session. Um, again, we've talked about Ollie a lot. He drove for Carlos. He got um, P7. He's shown he's no he knows what to do, and he's probably the front runner for one of the hot seats. Um, yeah, but again, I think so. Oh, I do too. Um, I don't want him to go to Haas because, like, I know he's good, but I know that's where your career goes to die. So, um, yeah. 
I would also but like to point out that Behrman is Behrman is still P13 in the driver's standings. Like, Danny Ricardo just jumped him, like, <laughs> last race in, in Montreal. Um, and yeah. Danny was, was of course, on a tear because, you know, he he is now beefing with Jacques Villeneuve, who basically said Danny Ricardo was washed and doesn't belong in Formula One anymore. And then I don't know uh, Ricardo said, excuse me, no, I, I mean, they, they clearly don't, I, I, you know, I want to, you know, reiterate from, from the Canada reaction that I just, I don't think Jack Villeneuve was a great add to the Sky Sports no. commentary. And, you know, obviously you and I both, and I have a lot of strong opinions on the Sky Sports commentary team. Um, and, um, you know, I, I think that he was definitely not one of the best ones and that, you know, like Ralph Schumacher, who makes opinions and says things, and we're all just like, oh my God, you know, somebody asked Ralph to stop talking. Um, I think Villeneuve is, in my in my personal opinion, is under the category of like, I don't want to hear what you have to say, sir. Please, Catherine, keep going on your opinions of the Sky Sports commentators. No, I'm just I kidding. Could I could do a, a full episode on that. I only say that because half of F1 weekends, Catherine and I just sit and bitch about people and what they're saying on commentary. <laughs> Um, or yeah. we highlight it and we're like, wow, that was a really good point. They're really great. But we spend a lot of time talking about Sky Sports uh, commentators. So yes, and really feels. But um, anyway, so I just wanted to share that little tidbit about Ollie, but Catherine, please give us our F1 Academy update for Spain. Yeah, this totally caught me off guard. I was like, oh, wait, F1 Academy Honestly, is back this I weekend too. Forgot. I completely, completely. forgot. Completely. Until I saw the Yay It's Race Weekend graphic on, on their Instagram account, I was like, oh my god, okay. Um, there hasn't been a, a lot of news. A lot of the um, F1 Academy drivers have been driving in other series. Um, and there have been a couple of wins. I don't remember off, off the top of my head, except um, Dorian Pond, who is the Mercedes driver. Um, she was supposed to drive in Le Mans um, with Iron Dames, who she's also driving with in um, Formula Regional by Alpine. Um, but she broke her ribs while competing with the Dames at Spa on May 26. So she had to bow out of Le Mans. Um, it looks like she's going to be back in action in time for Barcelona because um, she's got a little bit of work to do to take on Abby Pulling, um, who's the Alpine driver. But yeah, I, I think this could actually be a really interesting, really exciting weekend. Um, and the first few races of the season have really shown that no, you know, standings lead is safe and that we could see, you know, a rapid shift in what the grid looks like at the end of the, their, their two races um, and in a very different look to the driver standings once we get through the end of Spain. Yeah. And just to remind everybody, there's so many points available every weekend for F1 Academy races that it really can shift super quickly. Yeah, exactly. Like if you look at the driver standings right now, Abby Pulling has 99 points. Um, which is pretty significantly ahead of, of Dorian Pond's 65 points. Um, but Maya Vug, who is the Ferrari driver on the grid, she has 51 points. So she is 14 points behind uh, Pond, which could very easily, if like Pond DNFs and Vug um, finishes in the top, you know, four or five, that can totally completely flip-flop. Um, or, you know, we could see somebody else sweep the weekend. That's something that's very, you know, a lot easier to do in a series like the F1 Academy compared to like Formula One, where, you know, one thing, the F1 Academy cars are significantly smaller. Like I would love to see a side-by-side -side of an F1 Academy car next to a Formula One car. Yeah. Cause I think, cause like even F2 to F1, you can see a visual, a bit like a huge difference. And yeah, so, exactly. So I, I'd be like, it, it's probably like a little toy car, like a toy model car versus like the big, the big car. Um, but I would, I would very much like to see that. I'm very excited that they're back in action. I'm really excited to see who's going to be out in Spain to support the F1 Academy. Um, Cause we've got some great support in the last few race weekends. Um, and I'm here, I'm just very here for, you know, what we're going to see next. Um, and then from a constructor side, the battle is actually pretty close at the top. Kramer Racing um, has 124 points, followed by Rodent Motorsport, who has 122 points. So that's two points um, between them. Comp 
Coast Racing is in P3 with 82 points. They're kind of in a little bit of a no man's land. Um, but P4 and P5, we could see a very easy flip as ART Grand Prix has 46 points and MP Motorsport um, is, you know, the back of the bus sitting with 42 points. But that could change very easily with any one of those drivers from ART or MP seeing any amount of, of success, you know, top five finishes, which is completely possible in this uh, series. Yeah. And uh, again, everyone's driving the same car. So it's not like in F1 where we know certain cars have advantages in certain races or, or track styles. Um, this is the same car. So it really all is on the drivers. So which is also why we could see big swings weekend to weekend. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I we, can't we wait, shall see. Catherine, until we are on this podcast and saying that an F1 Academy driver is taking a free practice session for a driver or for young drivers program. That is what I can't wait yeah, to see. I'm I'm really excited to to get to that point. Obviously, you know, we've we've discussed this before in in some of our other F1 Academy, you know, recaps and news bits that like we know that right now F1 Academy is not positioned to send somebody straight up the grid to F1. And we know that that's oh, not no. the purpose of it, but the purpose is to get more women driving, you know, in these younger feeder series to get someone into F3, to get someone to ed- into F2, to then get someone into a practice session and, you know, it, you know, and get it to the point where it wouldn't be a gimmick. Um, and, you know, was Jamie Chadwick ever going to make it to Formula One? You can debate that. Obviously, she's moved on to IndyCar since the destruction of the W Series. Um, but she was probably the closest in a very long time, the closest since Susie Wolf, um, to get into a Formula One car. And even then, there was a lot of distance between them both that Susie and Jamie are still working, you know, very hard to close that gap. And I believe that the F1 Academy is the the series to do it. I agree, especially because Susie's running it. Yeah, just love Susie. She's a G. Love her. Okay, well, thank you for that update. Um, and again, in our recap episode, we will give a good update on F1 for the weekend. Um, but getting back to F1, we have our predictions. So yep. let's get into it. Catherine, I feel like I'm just recycling all of my predictions at this point because I feel very strongly on pole podium. P10 changes, yeah. but I feel like every week I'm the same podium. But with that being yeah. said, for the pole winner for the Spanish Grand Prix, who do you have? Um, well, this this was this was hard for me because, you know, I know that Ferrari's coming in with a big upgrade package and, you know, revenge in their eyes from Montreal, which was a disaster of a weekend for them. Um, but I feel like, you know, Max has really kind of resettled into the Red Bull. Obviously, we've got Lando. Mercedes is su- suddenly better, at least on Georgia's side of the garage. So this was hard for me. And I really just think that I have to go with Max again for pole. Yeah, he's a pretty safe bet, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, kind of. And we haven't scored points in, in our predictions in a couple true. of weeks. I know. I know. Well, I, you know, I was taking a little liberties and, you know, playing the yeah. the uh, old Alex Albon on the podium game. But, <laughs> um, yeah, so I have Max as well, which is, you know, not exciting, but tried and true, like I said. And we haven't sure. scored points in a few weekends, so I'm I'm looking for a point. That's all I need is yeah. one. Yeah. Um. Okay, and then for your podium, who do you have for your podium for Spain? This is also really hard for me. I also want to preface this with the fact that I did my predictions about five minutes before we recorded because I was helping edit a video um, with our video guy and was like, oh, crap, I need to do our predictions because we're about to record. Um, But I went with a Max win, a George Russell P2. He's going to continue doing what Mercedes is doing. Um, I guess we'll see. And I have um, a Charles Leclerc recovery um, in P3. I literally hate that. (laughs) Because it's the same or because it's George and Charles? Honestly, if you had like Checo, George, Charles, I think that would, I I would just leave the podcast. (laughs) You've been warned. Um, Thanks. But no, I mean, that's fine. Um, so I'm still riding the train that George's performance was a fluke, so I refused to put okay. him on the podium. Sure. Um, but it's a, it's a recycled podium, and I just don't care. Um, okay. I have Max, Lando, Carlos. 
So I think the upgrade, Carlos is going to handle it better than Charles. Um, we hope. We hope, but it is Ferrari, so stay tuned. And I just, I really like how Lando's driving this season. So mm-hmm. my recycled podium. Um, but my favorite prediction to make is P10. P10 is the last position where you get points on the grid. You get one point for P10. Catherine, who is your P10 getter? Um, I'm a little nervous for this because I tend to jinx this driver, but I'm no. going to do it. And I'm sorry, Daniel, if Daniel tanks it, it's probably going to have been my fault, but I have him in my P10. That's fair. I mean, I never like to put him at P10 because I always want more for him. True. But it's okay. Oh, there was an emergency somewhere uh-uh. in Chile. Um, that's fine. I, you know, don't ask me what made me do okay. this. I have Ocon? Okay. <laughs> sure. I don't know. I'm just... You know, I feel like we we either I either pick. Oh, there's an emergency closer to me in Chile. Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, whoa. <gasps> okay, Is I'm so sorry to interrupt. Yeah, guess it's outside. But that looks like a disco ball. There's so many colors going around. It's not a normal ambulance. It's like there's green and a bright blue and red and yellow and orange. Oh, that's so festive. They have serious that's, ambulance. Ambulances? That's, Ambulance? That's so Pride Month. That too. Um, anyways, wow. sorry. So what I was okay. saying before I was so rudely interrupted by this emergency. Um, I always pick Yuki, Lance, or Hulk. Like I just keep right. recycling those. So I'm like trying to think outside the box of who I really think lands in that middle ground. And I went off on. I'll I'll be wrong, but that's okay. I mean, who knows? Al- Alpine has has been less terrible. I mean, they had they had a double points finish. Like they they're they're exceeding our expectations of not scoring a point at all this season. I am riding high on the Alpine double points weekend. That is what it is. You are correct. Yes, there 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 we go. Yes. So Acon getting P ten would probably be a surprise, but for my surprise this weekend. Um, going off of news that Sargent finally has the full package that Albon has been racing with. Finally. Um, I have that, one, Sargent finishes the race, um, but more importantly, he has a solid race. Now, I'm not talking points, but I'm talking, like, not sitting in the garage at the end of it and not finishing, like, 18. So I want him to finish, like, in that, you know, upper non-point position. So, like, 11 through 15, 14, 15? 15. Yeah. Okay, okay. And, like, okay. we can't have five cars DNF and he gets P14. Like, that's not what I'm talking about, or P15, whatever. Right. The numbers are hard. Right. Um, but, no, I just, I, you know, I am I am back. I've taken my shit on Logan hat off, and I put my championing Logan hat on. So. Murray. There you go. <laughs> um, but what about you? What's your surprise for the weekend? Um, you know, I think that... With Haas, you have, like, a flash of brilliance and then a bad race right after, or a bad couple of races right after. Um, I'm My surprise is that, you know, we had a little bit of a flash of, of strategic brilliance at the beginning of Canada. Um, and I think that, you know, I think my vote is that Haas will also have a good weekend this weekend here in Spain. And I think that would be a surprise. Okay, if you say so. <laughs> no, it yes. would be a surprise. But yeah, like I feel like Haas has flash in the pan moments with their strategy. So um maybe yeah. Spain. I would just weekends. like to see that consistent. Like let, let's have yeah. a little bit more of a consistent. I also want to add, I did see news that um and we, we mentioned this last episode that um Stuart Haas, which is Gene Haas's NASCAR outfit, is shuttering. I just saw today, it's Thursday the 20th, that he's still staying in NASCAR, but he's like either rebranding or he's like picking up another couple of teams. So so Haas is continuing, you know, Gene Haas is continuing his investment into NASCAR, but I still think that this means that he's opening the door for somebody to take the Formula One team off his hands. I think what he's going to do is just, you know, double down on his NASCAR outfit and really invest all of his time and money there. And he's he should just sell Haas to uh, Haas F1 to Andretti. Agreed. 
yeah, so my, my tin hat foil hat is is fully still on my noggin um, when it comes to what Jean Haas is going to do in, in the future. I, 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 I think that's happening. And I have run out and bought Reynolds Wrap. So here we are with our tin foil hats. <laughs> yes. Um, if we weren't sponsored by them before, we should be now. Um, okay, so doing a dumb. Let's roll into who's going to do a dumb for you this weekend. Um... Honestly, and I kind of hate to do this, but I think McLaren is due. Oh, I hate that. I feel like McLaren I know. I is, don't... is like, you know, that team where no one hates them. Everyone roots for them. No one roots against them. You know? Yeah. Who who could hate Oscar and Lando? I understand the hatred towards Zach Brown. I'm also in that camp. But, like, they're great guys. Yeah. And, you know, coming back after a horrible, you know, beginning of 2023, they're killing it. Lando had a win. Um, I feel like they're just one of those teams. They're not – what's the word? I can't think of the word because I haven't slept. And I can't they're think of the word of... because I've been fried. Because you're not in my brain. But they're not one of those teams where, like, you either love them or, or, or you hate them. You know what I mean? They're just kind of one of those. That no, like, no, absolutely not. Well. So. They're not polarizing. But that's what you're looking that's for. That's the word. That's the word. Yes. Thank you. Between us, we have one brain. <laughs> we have one brain. Um, yes. No, but I understand what you're saying. Like, they're kind of due for an oops of a weekend because they've been, they've been doing pretty well. So, um, yeah. So... I, on the other hand, am taking my Team Ferrari hat off and putting my Team Ferrari What the Fuck Are You Doing hat on, and I just have Ferrari, just period. Like, something's going to happen okay. with the new upgrades being bad, or with Charles just, like, you know, putting softs on and pouring rain. Something is going to happen in the Ferrari garage. Like, I can just feel it in my bones. So. Okay. Okay. You know, there's every I know chance it's that it's going to be my day. Yeah, it probably. Who knows? Um, well, that's it for our predictions. And my final thoughts are I'm very excited for Spain. I'm, I'm excited to be back racing. We had an off weekend. And we're going into a triple header, which means we have three races in a row, which is going to be so interesting for our recording schedule. Just please bear with us and stay tuned. Yeah. Um, honestly, please <laughs> hold hold your butts. Who knows what's happening? um but yeah very excited for spain love barcelona such a classic track so yay yeah i okay. i'm also really excited i i don't know why but i like remember nothing of last year's race in spain so i'm really excited to actually remember this race um but we also have a number of staff members and a number of actual campers who are here who are also f1 fans so i'm really excited just like live through the F1 weekend with, you know, camp people here, um, which I think could be a really fun experience. And who knows, they might convince me to let them come on as guests, you know, which I don't know how well that will go, but we'll see. That'd be, that'd be kind of cool. We need to consider having guests just randomly mm -hmm. throw questions at them, ask for more opinions that we aren't just ours. Opinionate. That aren't ours. Um, but yeah, so we are at the end of the episode, which means it is time for your, uh, fun fact. So what is your F1 fun fact for us today, Catherine? So, um, I spent a lot of time with the video guy and our music, music specialist, and, um, we were talking about the Beatles and I was looking for F1 fun facts, um, right before we started recording as I do. And I found a fun little fact that the Beatles is George Harrison funded 1996 world champion Damon Hill's F3 and F3, F3000 careers. And F3000 used to be one of the direct feeder series into F1. Um, and I just find that fascinating and a little hilarious. That is interesting. Yeah. I really like this F1 fun fact segment that we do because I, I don't know them and I learn something new every single time. So I'm enjoying Surprise. this. <laughs> Surprise. Okay. Well, with that, we um, are at the end of the episode, but coming up, we will have our Spain reaction recap episode coming out on Monday with all of the sounds. Um, we will keep you up to date on our socials, obviously, give opinions on how things are going, obviously, all weekend long at going.off.track um, on Instagram. But that's it for our Spain predictions episode. Thanks for going off track with us, guys. <laughs>